السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد I welcome you all to the class of Tafsir Ibn Kathir and today inshallah ta'ala we are going to read Tafsir Surah Al-Jinn inshallah ta'ala wa hiya makkiyatun and it is makkiyah so let's begin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أوحي إلي أنه استمع نفر من الجن فقالوا إنا سمعنا قرآنا عجبا يهدي إلى الرشد فآمنا به ولن نشرك بربنا أحدا وأنه تعالى جد ربنا ما اتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا وأنه كان يقول سفيهنا على الله شططا وأنا ظننا أن لن تقول الإنس والإنس والجن على الله كذبا وأنه كان رجال من الإنس يعوذون برجال من الجن فزادوهم رهقا وأنهم ظنوا كما ظننتم أن لن يبعث الله أحدا Say it has been revealed to me that a group of jinn listen. Right? So this surah is about the jinn listening. They said, rarely we have heard a wonderful recitation. It guides to the right path and we have believed there and, and we shall never join anything with our Lord. And he exalted be the jadd of Allah has taken neither a wife nor a son and that the foolish among us used to utter against Allah that was a which was an enormity and falsehood. And verily, we thought that men and jinn would not utter a lie against Allah. And verily, there were men among mankind who took shelter with the males among the jinn, and they increased him in rahaqa. And they thought, as you thought, that Allah will not send, Allah will not send any messenger. So this is the first seven verses of Surah Al-Jinn. Seven verses of Surah Al Jinn. Okay, let's begin. Bismillah. And we stemma al Jinni lil Qurani wa Imanuhum bihi. So this surah is about the jinn. So, istema al Jinn, the jinns listening to the Quran and their belief in it. And their belief in it. So, the jinns listening to the Quran and their belief in it. يقول تعالى آمرا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يخبر قومه أن الجن استمعوا القرآن. Allah commands his messenger to inform his people. So Allah is saying, Qul, say, right? So Allah is informing that jinns listen to the Quran. Yastami'u hmm? al-Quran. Fa'amanu bihi wa saddaqu wa nqadu lahu faqala ta'ala. Qul uhiya ilayya annahu istama'na fadun minal jinni faqalu inna sami'na Qur'anan ajaba yahdi ila al-rushd. That the jinns listen and believed and affirmed it. Uh, its truthfulness and adhere. So they just not listen to it. They also believed in it just by listening. Subhanallah. So jinn, they accepted Islam. And Allah says, Qul ilayya. It has been revealed to me. Uhiya ilayya. <clears throat> Passive, right? Uhiya. Anna hustama'a nafarum min a group. Listen. Nafar group. Nafarum min al jinni faqalu. And they said what? Inna sami'na Qur'anan ajab. Well, we had a wonderful recitation because Qur'an is a recitation, right? Qur'an, qara'ya qara'u Qur'an. It guides to the right path. Yahdi ila rushti. So they identified that the Qur'an is the right path. It guides to the right path. Ay ila sadadi wa najah. That is, what is correct? Sadad and najah. It guides to correct what is correct and success. Fa'amanna bi. So what happened? When you listen to it, we believe therein, in it. And we shall never, then is for future, right? And we shall never join anything with our Lord. And this is similar and this is similar to Allah's statement, which is similar. When he sent towards you a group of jinn, nafaram min al jinn, istami'un al Quran, jinns listening. And he there in Surah Al Haqqaf, inshallah, when we reach there, because you're doing reverse, right? We will come to that. See volume 9, right? I've already presented the hadith in, that have been narrated concerning this. <coughs> <coughs> concerning this so there is no need to repeat them here concerning is Allah's statement so all those hadiths which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi met uh, is said here
عند يا دي لوجتي وقد قدمنا الحديث وقوله تعالى وانه تعالى جد ربنا قال علي بن ابي طلحه عن ابن عباس في قوله تعالى جد ربنا اي فعله وامره وقدرته then Allah says وانه تعالى جد ربنا and he exalted be the judge of Allah جد means for علي بن طلحه ابن طلحه the reaper from the bad that he said concerning sir جد ربنا the exalt uh, جد ربنا the judge of Allah this means his actions his commands and his power So what is this jad? Hmm, actions, commands, and power. Wa khala al-dahaq wa ibn Abbas in jaddu Allahi alauhu wa qudratuhu wa ni'matuhu ala khalqihi. And the report from Mujahid and Yakirma that they said, um, Ibn Abbas said, uh, Allah's jad is his blessings, his power, and his favor upon his creation. Hmm. So all this, the power, the creation, jad, Uh, let me see how um, they've translated Jadd in Sahih International. In Sahih International. Annahu mm. Ta'ala Jaddu Rabbina Majesty. They translate as Majesty. Mm. Uh, or the nobleness exalted Annahu Ta'ala is the nobleness of Allah, uh, nobleness. So, nobleness, jadd. Wadhuwi an mujahidin wa ikrima jalalu rabbina. Wa qala qatadatu ta'ala jalaluhu azamatuhu amruhu. Wa qala suddi ta'ala amru rabbina. Wa an abid dardai wa mujahidin aydan. Wa ibn Juhayr ta'ala dhikruhu. So, jadd, it is the magnificence, jalaluhu, magnificence of Allah, majesty. Exalted is his magnificence, his greatness, his command. As Suddhi said, exalted is the command of Allah. It has been reported from Abu Darda, Mujahidin Ibn Jujurai, that he said that this exalted is the remembrance. وَأَنَّهُ تَعَالَى جَدُّ رَبِّنَا So various opinions and majesty, his works, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is عَظَمَا The nobleness of Allah, noble. جَدْ وَلَا يَنْفَعُوا ذَا الْجَدِّ مِنْ كَالْجَدْ Uh, after the salawat we there's a dua no okay iqrar al jinn bi anna allah munazzah an al zawjati wal aulad so now the jinn they are giving da'wa to the people and they're saying that allah does not have a wife and children after hearing the quran so become so good and so uh, that he is alone wa qawlu ta'ala mattakhadha sahibatan wa la walada ay ta'ala عن اتخاذ الصحابة والأولاد أي قالت الجن تنزه الرب جل جلاله حين أسلموا وآمنوا بالقرآن عن اتخاذ الصحابة والولد ثم قالوا وأنه كان يقول سفيهنا على الله شططا قال مجاهد وعكرمة وقتادة والسدي سفيهنا يعنون إبليس ما اتخذ صاحبة so they describe Allah سبحانه وتعالى and saying he has taken neither a wife صاحبة Wala walada no son, meaning far exalted is he about taking a mate and having children. This means that when the jinns accept Islam and believed in the Quran, they professed Allah's magnificence and about having taken a spouse and a child. Child. And they said Allah is above all these things. He's pure. Then he. Then they said, "Wanahu kana yaqulu safihun ala Allah shatta." And that the foolish among us used to utter against Allah that which was an enormity and falsehood. Shatta. They used to say bad things about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And who's this Safihuna? Who's this foolish among us? Ala Mujahidun wa Ikrimah wa Qatada wa Sudi Safihuna ya'anuna Iblis. They said they were referring to Iblis because the evil among the jinn is who? Iblis. So Safi, the foolish guy, who's the guy? It is Iblis. That is Iblis. According to Ikrimah's Mujahid Ikrimah and Qatada and Sudi. Shatata. And what is Shatata here? قال السدي عن أبي مالك شططا أي جورا شططا they said جورا شططا a سدي report from Abu that he said this means a transgression شططا an excessive transgression so وأنه كان يقول سفي هنا إبليس used to say الله يا الله extreme transgression is to go Beyond, قال السدي عن أبي مالك شطط أي جورا وقال ابن زيد أي ظلما كبيرا شطط is what شطط ظلما كبيرا. 
uh, Ibn Zayd said great injustice. Iblis was saying things, you know, which is great injust, uh, unjust. وَيَحْتَمِلُ أَنْ يَكُونَ الْمُرَادُ بِقَوْلِهِمْ سَفِيهُنَا إِسْمُ جِنْسٍ لِكُلِّ مَنْ زَعْمَ أَنَّ لِلَّهِ صَاحِبَةً أَوْ وَلَدَا ولهذا قالوا ولا ولهذا قالوا انه كان يقول صفيونا اي قبل اسلامه على الله شطط اي باطلا وزورا ولهذا قالوا ان ظننا ان لن تقول الانس والجن على الله كذبا the foolish safi ibn kathir rahimahu allah says it could be it could refer to every person not only iblis the foolish also carries the meaning of everyone in the category so it could be every jinn you know before islam uh, who are an evil jinn a foolish guy in the category who claims that Allah has a spouse and a son. So uh, the jinn, Christian jinns and all that, they could have said, oh, Allah has a spouse and a son. This is why Allah says, وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ يَقُولُ سَفِيهُنَا Meaning before his acceptance of Islam, before his acceptance of Islam, Allah is shatata, and they should speak shatata, excessive transgression, falsehood against Allah subhanahu wa meaning falsehood and lie. Does Allah said, next words, وَأَنَّا ظَنَنَّا أَلَّن تَقُولَ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا and verily we thought that men and jinn would not utter a lie against Allah. أي ما حسبنا أن الإنس والجن يتمالؤون على الكذب على الله تعالى في نسبة الصاحبة والولد إليه فلما سمعنا هذا القرآن وآم النبي علمنا أنهم كانوا يكذبون على الله في ذلك. Meaning we did not think that human and jinns would join each other in lying. We thought okay these people humans and jinn how can they lie about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the god i mean right so, so jinns were so innocent uh, they said that we thought they'll never lie by attributing allah a spouse and a son to him we thought okay this all of them are saying so maybe it's correct right this is what people think right that all of them are saying so how can all of them be wrong but allah says no the people who follow the truth will be very few and uh when to take a month fill out you the look and sabil that if you follow most of the people they will misguide you so majority numbers is not the thing for us the thing is uh, quran and sunnah so even the jinn thought we, <laughs> we thought people weren't lie but so when we heard this quran we believed in it and we knew that they had been lying about allah in this matter so when quran said there's no wife and son like we thought they'd never lie but they actually were lying من سبب تغيان الجن استعاذة الإنس بهم. Now they start describing about the jinn, like why were they misguided? Why the jinn? Because if you realize, jinn could see many things which humans cannot see, right? They can see, they can see that angels, they can see the angels and all that, correct? Um, they can hear, um, they can hear um, uh, what do you say? Angels talking. They could hear so many things because they catch something into jinns and then. They bring it to the humans, right? and then it goes to the fortune teller, like the Rasulullah said. So if you if you if you think they are not similar in that way to human beings, because they can see so many things, they can uh, a meteor is coming from the angels, so they should they should have believed, right? But they have different reasons uh, for disbelieving, and one of them, Allah mentions, when humans uh, seek refuge in the jinns, they become strong, they become arrogant. So arrogance is one of the major reasons for disbelieving in jinn. It's not like humans like, okay, <clears throat> okay, he does not. Humans cannot see the ghaib, humans cannot see angels and all that. But jinn can see most of the, many, many of the things. So that's why Allah said, I mean, sabab, what reason? Why, 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 why are they transgressing? I mean, you can see jinn, I mean, you can see everything. Why are you disbelieving after seeing all these things? So Allah says, وَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِنَ الْإِنسِ يَعُوذُونَ بِالْجَالِ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَزَادُوهُمْ رَحَقًا And verily there were men among mankind, يَعُوذُونَ who took shelter with the males among the jinn. رِجَالِ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَزَادُوهُمْ رَحَقًا So, أَيْ كُنَّا نَرَى أَنَّ لَنَا فَضْلًا عَلَى الْإِنسِ لِأَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يَعُوذُونَ بِنَا إِذَا نَزَلُوا وَادِيًا أو مكان موحشا من من البراري وغيرها كما كانت عادة العرب في جاهليتها يعوذون بعظيم ذلك المكان من الجان أن يصيبهم بشيء يسوءهم كما كان أحد يدخل بلاد عداه في جوار رجل كبير وذمامه وخفارته Meaning we used to think that we had some watch status over mankind. We are better than humans, right? Jinn used to think. Because the men, they used to seek refuge with us whenever they would settle in a valley or in a place in the wilderness. So they used to go to a valley, right? The people in Jahiliya before Islam and all that. They used to say, I seek refuge in, in the jinn of this valley. 
don't harm us right there's to seek refuge and so jinn will be like oh wow they are seeking refuge with me so i'm great the open countries tepees and other places this was the custom of the arabs in the pre-islamic days of ignorance they used to seek refuge with the greatest jinn of the particular place so oh, i seek refuge now the line so and so jinn so and no harm would afflict them e- e- or evil would afflict them hmm? uh, أن الإنسا يعوذون بهم من خوفهم منهم زادهم رحقا أي خوفا ويرهابا وذعرا حتى بقوا أشد منه مقافة وأكثر تعوذا بهم كما قال قتالته فزادهم رحقا أي إثما وزادت الجن وازدادت الجن عليهم بذلك جراءة like if you go to the land of the enemies in the vicinity of a great and powerful man he would seek the protection and guardianship of that man. So there's some great guy, you go to him, there's a king or whatever, you seek protection from the king. Hmm? Similarly, they used to go and seek, okay, uh, we'll, we'll seek refuge from the greatest jinn and so on. So when the jinn saw that humans were seeking refuge with them due to the fear of them, the fear, I mean, they increased them in rahaka, which means fear, terror and fright. It increased them in this thing. They, didn't, they did so so that people they did so so that people, rahaka is burden, increase them in burden of sin, is what Sahih International translates. Uh, <clears throat> they did so that people would be more afraid, so they become arrogant, burden, they increase rahaq, and they seek refuge with them even more. As Qatar says concerning Zaya, fazaduhum rahaka, meaning in sin, and that the jinns become more bold and daring. Because, well, look at them, they're listening to us and all that, they became more jura. وَقَالَ السُدِّيُّ كَانَ الرَّجُلُ يَخْرُجُ بِأَهْلِي فَيَاتِ الْأَرْضِ فَيَنْزِلُهَا فَيَقُلْ أَعُوذُ بِسَيِّدِ هَذَا الْوَادِ مِنَ الْجِنِّ أَنْ أَدُرَّ أَنَا فِيهِ وَأَوْ مَالِي أَوْ وَلَدِي أَوْ مَارْشِيَتِي قَالَ خَتَادَ فَإِذَا عَادَ بِهِمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ رَحِقَتْهُمُ الْجِنُّ الْأَذَى عِنْدَ الْتَالِكِ السُدِّي says a man used to set out with his family until he came to a piece of land or which you would say, then you say, A'udhu Billah, not A'udhu Billah, A'udhu Bisayyidi Hadha Al-Wadi, A'udhu Bisayyidi Hadha Al-Wadi, A'udhu Billah, from the jinns, min al-jinni, an ad udarra ana fihi, that from the jinns, or that myself, my wealth, my child, or my animals are harmed in it. Qatada said, when they sought refuge with them, instead of Allah, the jinns would overcome them with harm because of that. Overcome with harm. Uh, they, would, they, would, they would become arrogant, I think, this overcome with harm because of that. That means uh, uh, they would become arrogant, burden will increase of sin, and they'd, they'd be, oh, humans are weak and we are great, and so on. Ibn Abi Hatim in Kirimah Taqal, كَانَ الْجِنُّ يَفْرَخُونَ مِنَ الْإِدْزِ كَانَ كَمَا يَفْرَخُ الْإِنسُ مِنْهُمْ أَوْ أَشَدْ فَكَانَ الْإِنسُ إِذَا نَزَلُوا وَادِيًا حَرَبَ الْجِنُّ فَيَقُولُ سَيِّدُ الْخَمْ نَعُوذُ بِسَيِّدِ أَهْلِ هَذِ الْوَادِ فَقَالَ الْجِنُّ نراهم يفرخون منا كما نفرخ منهم فدنوا من ال... فدنوا من الانس فاصابوهم بالخيل والجنون خبل والجنون فذلك خو الله عز وجل وانه كان رجال من الانس يعوذون بالجان من الجن فزادهم راقا اي اثما وقال ابو العاليه والزبيع والربيع وزيد بن اسلم راهقا اي خوفا قال مجاهد زاد الكفار طغيانا Ibn Abi Hatim said, like Ikrima that he said, the jinns used to fear humans just like the humans fear them. For the first, humans and jinn, they both used to fear each other. Or even worse. So they used to fear so much of the hills. So whenever humans would come to a valley, the jinns would flee. They would run away. In a big, in a big thing. Ibn Abi Hatim is saying. So the leader of the people would say, we seek refuge with the leader of the inhabitants of this valley. So the jinn says, we see these people fleeing from us just like we flee from them. Like we are running from them just like they are running from us. So... What do they fear us? Thus the jinn started coming near the humans and afflicting them in insanity and madness. And jinn comes in uh, comes in madness. Thus Allah says, And verily there were men among mankind who took shelter with the males among the jinn, and but they increased him in rahaqa, meaning in sin. Abu Ali Abu Arabi and Zaid ibn Aslam all said, Arahakan means this means in fear. It's same fear, burden. Mujahi said the disbelievers is increase in Tughyan, transgression. Then the next was, Wa Ta'ala, Wannahum Dhanu Kama Dhanantum. 
لن يبعث الله أحد أي لن يبعث الله بعد هذه المدة رسولا قاله الكلبي وابن جرير and then Allah says وأنه ظن and they thought as you thought كما ظننتم like you thought أَلَّنْ يَبْعَثُ اللَّهُ وَأَحَدَ that Allah will not send any messenger but Allah, Allah will leave us like we are why will you send a messenger meaning Allah would never send a messenger after this long period of time so after Isa al -Islam, there has been a long مُدَّةٍ طَوِيلَ right بَعْدَ مُدَّةٍ طَوِيلَ a long period 500-600 years why would Allah send a messenger now this was said by Al-Kalbi -Al and Ibn Jarid. Then Allah says, "Wanna lamasna sama sama fawajna fawajadna muliyat harasan shadidan wa shuhba. Wanna kunna naqud minha maqaid al sama. Fami yastami' lana yajid lahu shihab al rasada. Wanna la nadri ashar nudiida biman fil aldi am arad bihim rabbum rashada." The next three section is next section is the next three verses, and we have sought to reach the heaven. Hmm. And we found it filled with stern guards and flaming fires. Wanna kunna nakodu minha and valley was to sit there in stations to steal a hearing. But anyone who listens now will find a flaming fire watching him in Abush. And we know that whether and we know not whether evil is intended for those on the earth and whether their Lord intends intends for them guidance. Istiraqul jinni khabar al samai. قبل بعثة الرسول ورميهم بالشهب بعد البعثة. The jinn stealing information from the sky before the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent and striking them with flaming fire after his coming. So before they were able to steal uh, from the angels, you know, whatever. But now they are shot, they are strike struck with the flaming fire after his coming. يخبر تعالى عن الجن حين بعث الله رسوله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونزل عليه القرآن وكان من حفظه له أن السماء مليت حرسا شديدا وحفظت من سائر أرجائها وطردت الشياطين عن مقاعد التي كانت تقود فيها قبل ذلك so Allah informs that about the jinns when he sent his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam revealed the Quran to him. Among the ways he protected it was by filling sky with stern guards. So with guards everywhere, guarding it from all of its sides. So when the Quran was brought, there are guards everywhere. Everything is protected. The devils were then expelled from the places where they used to sit prior to that. لِأَلَّا يَسْتَرِقُ شَيْئًا مِنَ الْقُرآنِ فَيُلْقُوهُ عَلَى أَلْسِنَةِ الْكَهْنَةِ فَيَلْتَبِسَ الْأَمْرُ وَيَخْتَلِطَ وَلَا يُدْرَى مَنْ الصَّادِقُ وَهَذَا مِنْ لُطْفِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى بِخَلْقِهِ وَرَحْمَتِهِ بِعَبَادِهِ وَحِفْظِهِ لِكِتَابِهِ الْعَزِيزِ وَلِهَذَا قَالَ الْجِنِّ وَأَنَّا لَمَسْنَا السَّمَاءَ فَوَجَدْنَاهَا مُلِيَتْ حَرَسًا شَدِيدًا وَشُهُبًا so they were all gods, yeah? The devils were then expelled from places where they used to sit prior to that. This was so that they could not steal anything from the Quran and tell it to the soothsayers. So they listen something from the Quran, they may mix it, soothsayers will mix it up. So that is that was not allowed. They were causing matters to be confused and mixed up. If this happened, it would not be known who was, who was being truthful. Allah did this out of his kindness to the creation, his mercy, right? That the Quran was preserved and his protection so that there's no confusion, right? Uh, and his protection of his mighty book. This is why Jadjin says, And we have sought to reach the heaven, but found it filled with stern guards and flaming fires. And really, we used to sit there in stations, places to steal a hearing. But anyone who listens now will find a flaming shihab, a flaming fire watching him in ambush. أي من يروم أن يستدق السمع اليوم يجد يجد له شهابا مرسدا له لا يتخطاه ولا يتعداه بل يمحقه ويهلكه وأن لا ندري شذو أريد بمن في الأرض يا مراد بهم رب رشدا meaning whoever would like to steal some information so now I mean when when the Quran was being revealed they would want to steal by listening they would come and sit in hiding places or wherever he'll find a flaming fire waiting in ambush for him. It will not pass him or miss him, but will wipe him out and destroy him completely. Now, nobody can do that. It will kill him. Khalas. The jinn is gone. And uh, then they say, Allah says, 
حيث أسند الشر إلى غير فاعل والخير أضافه إلى الله عز وجل. Now here they say أشر أريد أن use passive verb so that this is balagha right. Uh, this is adab, meaning we do not know if this matter which has occurred in the sky, all this guarding and all that, is intended for those who are in the earth or if the Lord intends some guidance for them. They stated in such a manner, out of their etiquette in phrasing their speech, they said, they didn't, we are not allowed to uh, ascribe evil to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they did not attribute the doing, doing of evil to anyone. They said, is it intended? Evil is intended for them, Urida. But when they talked about good, they ascribe it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They attribute, attribute the good to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is beautiful, though. <clears throat> How they said, وَقَدْ وَلَدَ فِي السَّحِيهِ وَالشَّرُّ لَيْسَ إِلَيْكَ And in the hadith, it comes, Sahih, وَالشَّرُّ لَيْسَ إِلَيْكَ Evil is not attributed to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because evil is from the human beings, right? They're from the sins. The punishment that it comes to be called because of that. And because of that, they said this is Muslim. <clears throat> it used to be that shooting stars occurred before this. Huh? Even before this, there was meteors going on, shooting stars. However, it did not happen much. It was not much. But when Quran came, it was a lot. As was reported in the hadith of Ibn Abbas when he said, while we were sitting with the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, a shooting star flashed in the sky. And the sky became bright. So the Prophet said, What you used to say about this? What did you all used to say about this? I mean, before Islam, we used to say that a great person has been born and a great person has died because of shooting star. This is not so. But whenever Allah decrees a matter in the heaven, and then he went on to narrate the rest of the hadith, which we have already mentioned in Surah to Saba. So hadith number 1750. So this hadith, you can go and refer talked about that this is not the matter but people used to steal and they used to come and mix it up the fortune tellers and all that uh, and they said and they and this is what caused them to seek the reason for his occurrence. All this, why did this happen? Because they were going to the skies and finding all these guards and all that. So they sent out searching the east and the west. They were like search parties. Why is this happening? Then they found Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa reciting Quran while leading his companions in prayer. Thus they knew that this Quran was the reason for the sky being guarded. Therefore some among them believed in it and the others became more rebellious. So some believed obviously and some became more rebellious. We won't believe that. They said in the transgression, a discussion of this has preceded in Hadith of Ibn Abbas concerning Allah's statement Surah Al-Lahqaf وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفْرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ And remember when you sent towards you Muhammad a group of jinn listening to the Quran. And then he says, Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, وَلَا شَكَّ أَنَّهُ لَمَّا حَدَثَ هَذَا الْأَمْرِ وَهُوَ كَثْرَةُ الشُّهْبِ فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالرَّمْيُ بِهَا حَالَ ذَلِكَ الْإِنسَ وَالْجِنَّ وَانْزَعَجُوا لَهُ وَارْطَاعُوا لِذَلِكَ وَظَنُوا أَنَّ ذَلِكَ لِحْ لِخْرَابِ الْعَلَمِ كَمَا قَالَ سُدِّي لَمْ تَكُنِ السَّمَاءُ تُحْرَسُ إِلَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ نَبِيٌّ أَوْ دِينٌ لِلَّهِ ظَاهِرْ فَكَانَتِ الشَّيَاطِينُ قَبْلَ مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم قد اتخذت المقاعد في السماء الدنيا يستمعون ما يحدث في السماء من أمر فلما بعث الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد نبيا رسولا رجم ليلة من الليالي ففزع لذلك أهل الطائف فقالوا أهلك أهل السماء لما رأوا من شدة النار في السماء واختلاف الشوف there's no that doubt that when so many shooting stars began appearing in the sky. So people in Makkah, they were like seeing so many shooting stars. What is this happening? It horrified humans and jinns alike. 
right? During the time of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when Prophet would come, there's so many shootings. I mean, there's so many shootings of the jinns. They were very disturbed and alarmed by it. They thought that was the destruction of the world. Yeah, khalas, this world is going to end. As Suddhi said, the sky was never guarded. Except if there was a prophet in the earth or the religion of Allah was victorious and dominant in the earth. So the devils before the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had taken sitting stations for themselves in the heaven of this world and they would listen to the matters that occurred in the heaven. But when Allah sent Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a prophet and messenger, they were suddenly pelted one night. So these guys who were sitting, they were like shot, claiming, shooting sound. So the people of Taif, right? Who's the saying? Mm, 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 mm. saying mm. so the people of Taif are frightened because there's this and they began to say dwellers of the sky have been destroyed so they're saying oh halaka ahlu samai halaka ahlu sama the people of the heaven are destroyed people of the heaven lima ra'u min shiddati nari fi samai wa khtila fi shub fa ja'alu yu'tiquna adi qawmis wa yusayyibuna sayyiba yusayyib wa yusayyibuna mawashiyahum فَخَالَ لَهُمْ عَبْدُ عَبْدُ يَالِيَلْ عَبْدُ يَالِيلْ إِبْنُ عَمْرِ إِبْنُ عُمَيْرٍ طَائِفَ the people of what they uh, destroyed in the sky this was because they saw the severe fires in the sky oh what is happening and the shooting flames they began freeing the servants and abandoning their luxuries فَجَعَلُوا يُعْتِقُونَ عَاتَقَ يُعْتِقُونَ أَذِقَاهُمْ ذِقُونَ رِقَا slaves وَيُسَيِّبُونَ مَوَاشِيَهُمْ and uh, luxuries and animals abandoning. So Abdul Yalil ibn Amr ibn Umayyad said to them, وَيَحْكَمُ يَا مَعَشْرَ أَهْلِ الطَّائِفِ وَيَحْكُمْ وَيَحْكُمْ Oh, they said, وَيَحْكُمْ يَا مَعَشْرَ أَهْلِ الطَّائِفِ أَمْسِكُوا عَنَ أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَانْظُرُوا إِلَى مَعَلِمِ النُّجُمْ فَإِنَّا رَأَيْتُ فَإِنْ رَأَيْتُ مُوهَا مُسْتَقَرَّةً فِي أَمَاكَنِتِهَا فَلَمْ يَهْلِكَ Ibn Abi Kabashat, yani Muhammadan, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, uh, uh, Abdu Ya'lil, Ibn Amr, Ibn Umayyad said, Woe to you, people of Taif. Hold on to your wealth. Why are you abandoning and going on? And look at these guiding stars in the sky. If you see them remaining in the place, then the dwellers of the sky have not been destroyed. Rather, this has happened because Ibn Abi Kabashat, meaning Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you look and see that you no longer can see the stars, then verily the dwellers of the sky have been destroyed. So, he said, what? He said, if you, if you see that they are uh, the shooting stars are gone. Hmm. Uh, then they are destroyed. But the shooting stars are remaining or something. That means it's because of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When nadartum falam falam tarawha faqad halaka ahlu sama. If you don't see them short and gone, that means they're dead. Fanadaru farawha. So they looked and saw that the stars still remain. Hmm. No. So the stars, stars still remain. And the devils also frightened, were frightened during that night. They went to Iblis and informed him what happened to him. So Suddhi so said, Imam Suddhi, so, uh, so these guys, jails were like, what's happening? This fire is in Allah. Iblis said to them, bring me a handful of dirt from every line so that I may smell it. So Iblis was like, uh, get me some sand. I want to find out. فَأَتَوْهُ فَشَمَّ فَغَلْ صَاحِبُكُمْ بِمَكَّةٍ Iblis said, your sahib, your companion is in Makkah. It is your friend in Makkah. And so he smelled everything. Then he sent off seven jinn. فَبَعَثَ سَبْعَةَ نَفْرٍ مِنْ جِنِّ نَصِيبِينَ فَخَدِمُوا مَكَّةَ Then he sent a group of seven jinns to Makkah and they found the Prophet Sallallahu standing in prayer al-Masjid al-Ram while reciting the Quran. فَوَجُدْ نَبِيَ اللَّهِ قَائِمًا يُسَلِّ فِي الْمَسْجِلِ الْحَرَامِ يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ فَدَنُوا مِنْهُ حَرْحِرُسًا عَلَى الْقُرْآنِ حَتَّى كَادَتْ كَلَاكِلُهُمْ كَلَاكِلْ تُصِيبُهُ ثُمَّ أَسْلَمُ فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَمْرَهُمْ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَقَدْ ذَكَرْنَا هَذَا الْفَصْلَ مُسْتَقْصًا فِي أَوَّلِ الْبَعْثِ مِنْ كِتَابِ السِّيرَةِ الْمُطَوَّلِ وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ لِلَّهِ الْحَمْدُ and uh, then they accepted Islam, listening. They drew near to him, eager to hear the Quran, till a chest almost pressed against him. So, so close, so close to Allah. Obviously, Allah cannot feel the mind. Nobody can feel the jinn. Yeah? So close. Then they accepted Islam, and Allah revealed the matter to his messenger. We have mentioned this chapter in its entirety in the first section of Kitab al-Sirah with lengthy discussion. There's a similar narration in Ibn Abbas, recorded by a tabri 
the volumes of the Safat. So this is why Ibn Abbas also. Allah knows best and to him is all praise and blessings. Okay. I think this is enough for today. How many verses are there? So little then. 28. Yeah, I think it's enough. Yeah, maybe in the next sections we can do in our next class. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Jeans confess to Allah's power, the first few. It's a long tafsir, yeah. <clears throat> uh, command for us. Yeah, yeah, it's a long one. Maybe two sex, two parts for this. Inshallah. Because he goes into a discussion about this. Mm, yeah. So verses 1 to 10. Mm, we've done verses 1 to 10. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakallahu khaydan. Subhanakallahumma. Bihamdik. Ashadun la ilahi lant. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Um, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.